In the early 1800s, Canada was a colony divided by region, religion, language, and class. The French in Lower Canada and the British in Upper Canada were bitter neighbors, each with very different beliefs and objectives. In 1841, to stem the tide of rebellions throughout the land and the potential threat of American annexation, Upper Canada and Lower Canada were united by an act of British Parliament to form the province of Canada. The great object of the Union is to amalgamate as soon as possible into one people, the population of both provinces. 1841 Parliamentary Debates. The world was witnessing the birth of a new nation, but politicians representing each province agreed on very little, and least of all, the site of the United Provinces' first capital, Kingston. It was disliked by the political elite for being too primitive, inaccessible, and vulnerable to American attack. It was abandoned after only three years. At the capital's next destination, Montreal, Parliament fared even worse. After serving as capital for four years, an angry English-speaking mob in 1849 torched the legislature and stoned the governor general during a riot over the Rebellion Losses Bill. The controversial bill was passed to compensate the French in Lower Canada, whose property had been damaged during the rebellions of 1837-1838. The English of Upper Canada saw the bill as payment for disloyalty. The Montreal riot prompted the government to adopt a recommendation that Parliament would alternate every four years between Toronto and Quebec City. The capital's transient soon became a metaphor for the country's social and political divisions. The government was moving every four years between Toronto and Quebec City at that period in the 1850s. And this was, was an enormous expense. The difficulty was is that uh, they were losing records, that the politicians felt that they were being exploited by the, the towns every time they moved. And the towns themselves, of course, went through a process of feast and famine. After a decade of upheaval, parliamentarians had finally had enough. It became very, very clear that a fixed site, as they called it, was uh, probably called for, and the governor, Edmund Head, in particular, became committed to the idea of a fixed site. Quebec, Montreal, Ottawa, Kingston, Hamilton, and Toronto were all vying for the honor of becoming the permanent capital. The wrangling and backstabbing among the cities to undermine each other's bid was fierce and remembered as one of the most bitter struggles that ever took place in any British Parliament. Finally, in 1857, it was decided that Queen Victoria intercede and choose. The Queen's decision, folklore suggests, was made after she saw a watercolor of Ottawa's Barrack Hill, painted by the wife of Sir Edmund Head, Governor General of the Colony. The Victorians uh, were obsessed with sight, and it was a really important thing to have your building properly situated. You weren't just talking about a building. It had to have the right ambulance. Well, you couldn't get a better sight. Uh, it had a lovely flat top, plenty of room for your buildings, and then it had a beautiful dramatic drop, very picturesque, to the Ottawa River. And the overall view out from the point is this beautiful view of the Gatineau Hills in the far distance. Uh, it had everything going for it. That the selection of the capital was determined by a long-lost watercolor is a myth. Queen Victoria's choice of the little logging village known as